Hi gorgeous people, it's JJ here. I thought I would get onto a quick Facebook Live. I've just jumped out of, uh, I don't know if I've just started then, something happened to my computer, but I'll start again anyway. Hi guys, it's JJ here. I thought I would jump on a quick Facebook Live. I've just been on a live with my students and uh, pretty fired up and wanting to give some some strategies I suppose and share some information to some of you that might be really needing some support right now particularly business owners I want to talk to the business owners that are out there and uh, talk to you guys about some thoughts that I have around business uh, you would have seen in the comment section that I talk about leaning in not leaning out with the challenges that are happening in the world right now, a lot of people often lean out because they're fearful. It's really about doing the opposite of that and leaning in. So I want to talk a little bit about the journey of business. Now, I look at business like seasons, seasons of business. Now, there's a quote that I wanted to read out to you guys, and it's from Jim Rowan. Those of you that know Jim Rowan, who, who is amazing, uh, his quote, and he says, Life and business is like the challenging seasons. You cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. Therein lies the opportunity to live an extraordinary life, the opportunity to change yourself. So whatever's happening out there in the world right now, it's what you can control. Even though there's lots of uncertainty out there, it's more so about what you can control within your means. And I'm reading a great book at the moment by Jarek Robbins. So those of you that know the amazing peak performance coach Tony Robbins, for instance, this is his son and his book and I'm really enjoying it. And... He says, let me just find this little bit that I've just read. He says this, when you discover or rediscover your authentic self and start heading in a new direction, sometimes it can feel like you're taking a step backward. You may be starting at the beginning of a new endeavor and rebuilding from the ground up. This is a time when you need to harness your mental strength more than ever. And I think that is so relevant to today, guys, because today there's been so much change. I know for myself in my business, there's times where I've looked at, you know, there's, there's stuff that you've already built in your business and it's like, okay, can I hold on to this? I want to hold on to this in my business or do I change it or do I get rid of what I've already created? Um, I'm saying to my clients right now, it's a bit like pressing the restart button. Let's restart and let's look at even the stuff that we've created in our business. Can we redefine it? Can we create something new? And really pressing that restart button in your business and in life with COVID, with what's happening in COVID. So there's a couple of things. I actually want to share my screen if I can, if I'm going to be so clever and share my screen with you guys. I'll just check if um, any of you guys are on. Say hello, guys, if you're on, because I, or else it feels like I'm talking to myself, which I can do quite well. But uh, it's nice to see if people are on the call so I can get some interaction, because I'm doing this for you guys. So I'm really wanting to help you guys at the moment. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm giving you this information. Alrighty, so we're sharing the screen. Cool. So let me uh, get my slides happening. Here we go. All right, so you'll see with this first slide, and it's about fear. So fear has two meanings, as you guys would have seen before. It's fear has two meanings. You can forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. The choice is yours. So I really want everyone in business to look at that, because I know that whether in business or in your personal life, there's a lot of fear around right now. And I want people to be able to know what fear is and be able to go, okay, it's either forget everything and run or let's face everything and rise. That's what I want to do is face everything and rise. I love this saying from Tony Robbins. 
So Tony says 80% of achieving our goals is our psychology and 20% is our strategy or the mechanics of the goal. Now, if we haven't got our psychology right, guys, then we, we can't achieve the goal because 80% of it is psychology. Our mindset has to be right. Now, when we're challenged and things happening in the world, we can fill it with garbage. You know, the media right now, there's so much thrown at us in regards to in language and what's happening in the world and restrictions and all that sort of thing. We've got to keep our psychology strong. If it isn't strong, then we're not going to be able to achieve. We're not going to be able to see clearly to focus on creating and being able to achieve what we want to achieve. And our beliefs are really important. What we believe to be true. So if we believe that uh, all businesses are failing right now, if business is too hard, if we hold on to those beliefs, then they're not going to serve us and we're not going to be able to get the, the results that we want to achieve. So we've got to really challenge our beliefs. So if people say all businesses are failing right now, well, that's if we challenge that, that's, that's not true. There are businesses that are booming right now. Uh, so really challenge those beliefs that aren't serving you because you can't have a belief that's not serving you and that conflicts with your goal, it will pull you back. You cannot have a belief that's not serving you and conflicts with your goal and at the same time achieve your goal. It's not possible. So we've got to make sure that our beliefs are in line with what we want to achieve. And this is something that's really important too that I talk a lot with my clients about. This is what's happening. So an event happens in your world. So an event happens in your world and you might say, okay, uh, with this event, you might say uh, someone doesn't like you, for instance, and, and you, you walk past someone and they roll their eyes and you think, okay, well, they're not happy with me. And what happens is that you make that mean, that event, you make mean something to you. So actually, I might um, get out of this to show you something. I'm not sure if I can do it here. Can I do it here? Yes, that's right. So you'll see here that you've got the event. So for instance, one of my coaches, my mentors, Joe Parnay, I listened to his podcast the other day and he said, uh, you know, what can you make things mean? And he said, it's like when you see someone down the street and you, you might be smiling at them and it's your friend, your mate, and you're like, hello, hello. And they're not looking at you and they just keep walking. What do you make it mean? Do you make it mean, oh, they're ignoring me. They don't like me. And then that that consumes you or do you say that's a story that I've created around the event because the event itself is someone walking down the street looking forward that's the event now you can't get emotions from the event you actually get the emotions let me um, change this here you get the emotions from the story let me do this a bit thicker from the story this is where you get the emotions from the story that you create around the event. This story, not the event itself. It's the story that you create the emotions around. So if you change this, so if this is disempowering, this story, and you change it to something that's empowering, it completely changes your emotions. So that you, we've got to really watch these stories that we're creating. The other thing I, I wanted to quickly mention is where we're at right now in our life. So if we look at where we are right now in our life, hi Dean, how are you? Uh, if we look at where we are right now in our life, we, so this is a wheel of life. For those of you that haven't seen this before, the wheel of life is all the areas that we have in our life. So for instance, you can have, you can name it whatever. So here we've got finances, personal growth, health, family, relationships, social life, attitude. You might have spirituality there. Uh, you might have a whole separate thing for fitness. You might have a separate thing for friends, whatever's right for you. And if you look at your life right now and you say, okay, so here's zero here. So if we say, um, if we say zero is here, oops, now I'm moving it. Um, so if we say zero is there, 
out of in our finances this is zero to ten how happy are you with your finances so you might say okay I'm okay you know about five five is good so you might do five here right and then you color that in so that's five great what about your personal growth I might change the color here so your personal growth you might say oh, I'm really not doing a lot of personal growth so I, I think it's about two so you go two here and then you might look at relationships uh, oh, let's go let's go health and you go well I'm really healthy I'm really fit I've been going to the gym and eating right great I'm about a nine here and as you can see if you think that this is like a wheel like a, a wheel a bike wheel or something like that now if we fill it all out in all, all, all different colors and we say okay so I'm just gonna play here so we go okay family I'm really happy so that's ten that's that's amazing relationships we might say uh, don't see my friends enough so that's probably about here uh, and you might say social life I haven't got any <laughs> moment if you're not online so you might say my social is uh, down here and this is really important guys because we need to have connection and then you might say what's your attitude like so oh, my attitude's really fantastic at the moment I've, I'm doing really well and that might be up here so as you as you can see your wheel can be a bit wonky right so here your career oh I don't know what's happening I've just lost my job or whatever it is and so <laughs> I'm good at coloring in <laughs> so you can see if this was a wheel on your bike it would be wonky now the thing is to to know where you're at right now so where are you at right now where are you strong is it your attitude is it your health is it your whatever it is but no wherever you are that's okay it's not about saying oh shit you know I'm a really down on this area of my life it's more so to go okay let me get a snapshot of where I am and then take responsibility for that now this is the, the ch most challenging thing because I have a belief right or wrong that anything that happens in my life is my a hundred percent responsibility it's my responsibility and so I have this belief because that, that that empowers me it's like this is in my control so wherever you guys are at with your finances your personal growth where's wherever it is my belief and you can choose to take this on board or not is that wherever I'm at is basically because of my decisions that I've made so any decisions that I've made or not made any actions that I've taken or not taken have given me have taken me to a place of where I am right now now of course there's outside influences there's COVID I know all of that but any if I can say overall this is where I'm at and I'm here because of all my decisions that I did didn't make or did make actions that I did take or didn't take then I'm 100% responsible for where I'm at right now that's that's my belief that I choose to take on board now what I can do is I can change things right so I can look at it and go okay well this is where I'm at it's not a blame game it's not a shame game it's more about let's look at it and now let's be able to take on and get some goals set and really look at these areas so if your finances aren't great why are they not great now again yes there's outside influences but still if you say okay I've lost my job and because of COVID right I've lost my job because of COVID and so I've only got a month worth of, of, of money left again so were your finances in a in a position that you wanted them to be in because you you can you, it, it's a month it's a month right or six months or whatever so uh, were you regardless of COVID in a in a position that you were comfortable with and I'm, I'm probably not if you've only got a month's worth of pay left uh, in your finances so it's really looking at okay so what decisions have I made or not made in regards to my finances in the last 12 months two years five years ten years with your personal growth you say the same thing what things have I done and there might be some great things that you've done so your finances might be really good at the moment and you might be going, that's great because I've I've really made sure I've stuck to a budget I've been able to invest and you might be really great fantastic but still look at the areas that you can improve 
And so really getting a snapshot of where you are and where you want to be because you do this in three months time. So I suggest that you do this every quarter and you look at it and say, where am I at? Am I improving? Because you don't want to be going doing this exercise in 12 months time. And if you're saying, okay, this is where I'm at right now in my finances and you come back in 12 months time and you do it again and it's like, oh, I'm still here. Then that's again your responsibility to change that and so it's really about seeing where are we at right now and how can we change that and there's a couple of things i've, I've just talked through with my clients uh in uh your time to shine but i'll give you a couple of these things is looking at your goal firstly i love this quote whether you can or you think you can't you're right right by henry ford but looking at where do you want to be in 12 months time and visualize write it down visualize it uh, get it into your some of the best athletes are such great visualizers I know that there was one uh, athlete I don't know who it was but he would lie down in bed and he'd have uh, on his ceiling he would write down all these things that he wanted to achieve and they would be literally on his ceiling <laughs> So we've got to, whatever we, our goal is, we've got to really visualize it. What does it look like? How does it make us feel? Like get it in our body. How does it make us feel? So for instance, if uh, I work with a lot of speakers, if it's someone that hasn't been on stage before and uh, is, is wanting to get on stage and have a hundred people or a thousand people in the room and do a big event, then what you should be doing is you write it down and write it in detail. So there's a thousand people in this room and I'm standing on the stage. And what are you wearing? Like really visualize what you're wearing. And what are, and what are you seeing? So you're seeing the people smiling at you. You're seeing the lights in the background. You're seeing the crew that are uh, doing your event. You're seeing, you're seeing the people lining up after you're spoken and they're, they're so thankful for all of the information that you've given them. You know, what are you hearing? You're hearing people say, oh, that was fantastic. I love that speaker. So you're getting your whole, all of your senses involved in into your goal. You're also, you're visualizing it really strongly and you're writing it down and languaging, languaging it. One of my best coaches that worked with me would say, "You, if you don't language it, you can't have it. And so language it out loud what you want to achieve. And the other great thing is if you're languaging it and putting it out there, then you're making yourself accountable to someone other than you. And that's a really powerful thing as well. And the other thing that I find is really important is what will it give you to have achieved that goal? So, you know, really thinking about what's it's going, what it's going to give you. So this is the pleasure of achieving the goal. A lot of the times with what we achieve or don't achieve links to how much pain that we have or how much pleasure. Now, those that uh, have habits that aren't serving you, so whether you, you drink too much alcohol or whether you're smoking or whether you're not the, the weight that you want to be, whatever that is, we do habits that aren't serving us. Uh, they're not serving our life, but they're serving us in, a, in some way. And we relate to having more pleasure in keeping the habit and more pain in giving it up. For instance, if you speak to a smoker that says that's been smoking for 20 odd years and you say to them uh, and they say, oh, I want to give up, but they'll say, but it makes me feel good. Uh, and it relaxes me. So what they do is they relate all of that pleasure to keeping the habit rather than the pain. They'll deflect the pain. They'll say, yeah, I know people get, you know, cancer and whatever, but that's not me. Or it's only a small percentage or whatever. They'll dismiss that, but they'll hold on. They'll, they'll amplify the pleasure. And that's why they've kept hold of that habit because there's not enough pain to be able to change and there's more pleasure in holding on to that habit. So for your goals, what we need to do is to make sure that we look at what will it give us in pleasure to have achieved us and really looking at, uh, into deeply how that uh, will help us. 
And the other thing is, what are the people in your life relying on you to make this happen? Who are the people that are relying on you to, to make this happen? So it could be your family, your kids, your partner, your potential clients. I was saying this on the call today with my clients is that there, there might be people that you want to help that don't even know you yet. Now, I had an experience where one of I've had many experiences where people have said, thank goodness I saw that Facebook Live, JJ, because I was at my end of my tether and life wasn't worth living uh, in that moment. And then suddenly I saw this video or whatever it was that helped me and got me out of that state. Look, and I didn't don't know these people. And so you, you could be helping that one person that you don't even know yet. And so it's really important to, again, this gives you leverage. It gives you... Uh, leverage for you to continue on and make sure that that uh, that goal that you have set yourself that you make it happen and I love this starfish story that, that I'll read out uh, uh, and it says a man was walking along a deserted beach at sunset as he walked he could see a young boy in the distance he drew nearer and noticed that the boy kept bending down picking something up and throwing it into the water Time and again, he kept hurling things into the ocean. As the man approached even closer, he was able to see that the boy was picking up starfish that had been washed up on the beach, and one at a time, he was throwing them back into the water. When the man asked the boy what he was doing, the boy replied, I'm throwing these washed up starfish back into the ocean, or else they will die through lack of oxygen. But, said the man, you can't possibly save them all. These, uh, there are thousands on this beach and this must be happening on hundreds of beaches along the coast. You can't possibly make a difference. And the boy looked down and frowned for a moment and then he bent down to pick up another starfish, smiling as he threw it back into the sea. I made a huge difference to that one. And I think that is such a powerful, short but powerful story of the difference that we can make. And that difference could be someone in your family, like your goal really relating that to the difference that you can make to somebody else. And I often say this with our goals, we need to be, they need to be bigger than us so that we have leverage. So it's not about, you know, maybe it's not about that that car that you want or that it, it, it gives you something. It's not the product or the thing that you actually want. It's how you it makes you feel. It's what it gives you. So a car, for instance, might give you freedom. It's not about the car itself. You might get a car, but the car gives you might give you freedom to drive with the wind in your hair because it's a convertible or whatever it is. Your goal gives you something. And when you connect really strongly with it and you lean into the goal and you know, looking at, you know, clearly what that goal is and you visualize it really effectively you then know what it will give you so you you have enough pleasure to be able to associate with it you then have the people that are relying on you so you're making the goal bigger than you and then thinking about all those people that you can help and maybe they're people that you don't even know um, for instance, Dean, I don't know if you're still on, but I know that you've been doing some you know, really great lives with your singing. And uh, I used to dance with Dean for those that, <laughs> not dance, well, he was a singer and I was one of his backup dancers. I know people think that's hilarious now. <laughs> uh, but you know, D Dean, you're doing lots of singing and uh, lives on that. And so the people that you're helping you don't know how many people you're helping. You'll hear who you're helping that are on the call that might respond and say, I'm loving it. But then there's people that maybe don't comment but watch you and they're watching and, and you're making their day. And particularly now that with the challenges of particularly in Victoria or in Melbourne, uh, that there's stage four restrictions in COVID, people are feeling isolated. So to be able to have someone sing in their lounge room uh, it's it it helps with their connection and helps with their mindset so you know all our goals need to be bigger than us and when they are we can then get uh, we have more leverage to make them happen happen so I trust that I'm stop sharing now I trust that that has been valuable for you guys um, those of you that watch the recording later make sure you post something put a comment there um, I've just thought I'd just jump on quickly. 
I know I haven't planned it and let you guys know about it, but I thought it was some valuable information. And I know even if it's one person that can get something out of the information that I've shared, that, that makes me happy. So keep leaning in, guys. I know it can be challenging, particularly those in Victoria, uh, but lean in start creating set some really great goals make sure that you're focused on the stories that you're creating um, out of your events make sure that they are empowering you uh, and because remembering they're your emotions and if your emotions aren't in line with where you want to go then uh, you're not going to achieve you need to have that psychology the 80 percent psychology is so important uh, because that's what's going to get you there. And 20% is the strategy, right? So you can get a strategy from, you can get it online. We need to make sure we have the psychology right. Um, so I trust that some of that information has helped you guys today. Thanks, guys. Have a great one, and I look forward to seeing some comments on there later on. Thanks, guys.